Here is a very tricky question, which is very unusual from the others. But once you know the pattern, it is very easy to solve it. Here is the question. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? You are presented with the sequence of four items, and you need to determine the arrow's location for the item number four. You have four different choices. A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? The answer is not obvious, let me tell you, but always look for patterns. Once you determine the pattern here, this question is very easy to answer. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As I mentioned, always look for patterns. And the pattern here is triangles rotation. If we rotate triangles from the sandbox and we rotate them 180 degrees, we'll get to the square. And that's exactly what's happening between shape number one and shape number two. And this diagram below explains what's happening. Once you figure out the pattern, you know exactly how to calculate the location of the arrow in the shape number four. Let's recap. Always look for patterns. Patterns presented in this question is consists of two items. Triangles from the sand clock rotate 180 degrees to the next shape. And position of the arrow is determined based on the rotation. This is why the next shape will be the one with the arrow pointing at the same corner as it was before the rotation. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know what to look for on the real test. Here's the question from the test. But somehow I have a feeling that you might come up with the answer. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? And you have a sequence of four shapes. The third shape is missing and you need to select the right shape out of four choices at the bottom. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the right answer? Please take a careful look to see if you can come up with the solution. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you will get to the right answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As usual, answer might be a lot simpler than you think. But the key is to always look for patterns. So take a look at the patterns here with the shapes. The first shape, arrow points to 12 o'clock. Second shape points to 3 o'clock. You see that it clicked two positions between the first shape and the second shape. Then the next shape, arrow supposedly will point to 6 o'clock because the last one points to 9 o'clock. So that's the answer. You go two corners at a time and you calculate the next move using the formula. So the correct answer is choice D, arrow pointing to 6 o'clock. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now here's the question for you to try. On Sunday, Greg left his house at 6 p.m. and traveled a certain distance before arriving at his desired destination at 1 p.m. the following day. Assuming that his home and destination are in the same time zone and that over the course of his entire trip he drove at an average speed of 38 miles per hour, how many miles did he travel to get to his desired destination? And you have four choices to choose from. Choice A, 722. Choice B, 747. Choice C, 801. And choice D, 837. Do you think you know the answer? If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Alright, this question is quite tricky, but regardless of whether you can solve it or not, once I show you the solution, I'm pretty sure you will be excited. Which of the following squares is different from the others? And you're presented with four different choices. Each square contains nine small squares inside. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see patterns? Would you like to try to solve this question on your own? Give yourself maybe 10 to 15 seconds. Go closely with each square and look if you see any patterns. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve and get to the correct answer together. Sometime I feel that I shouldn't reveal the answers to some of the questions. It's like a magician. Once you reveal the answer, you always remove the magic from the question. As usual, with any question, you always look for patterns. 
This would allow you to detect it on your own in the future questions. In this particular case, you see that we have a V pattern, and choices A, B, and C all have V patterns in the different dimensions. And choice D, in this case, does not have a V pattern. Maybe you can imagine some letter, maybe in another alphabet, but um, I don't see anything in English that you can imagine here. So the correct answer here is choice D. Let's recap. Always look for patterns. All squares show a V shape with the exception of one. And figure D shows reverted L shape, which is not similar with the others. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the tricky question from the real test. At first, answer seems obvious, but it may not be what you think. Which of the following is different from the others? And you're presented with four different choices, A, B, C, and D. Try to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. We'll reveal solution in a second. Maybe give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, pause this video, and see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue and reveal and get to the correct answer together. My advice to you is always the same. Always look for patterns. In this case, the pattern is quarters, quarters inside the circles. As you can see, choices A, C, and D do have quarters inside the circle in different ways. But the choice B does not have any quarters. So that is the correct answer here for this particular question. Hopefully you've nailed it, but in case you need more questions or practice problems, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Here is the tricky question we frequently see on the test. Which of the following does not belong to the group? And you're presented with four different shapes, which represent four different choices. A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Please take a look carefully. Maybe give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, possibly pausing this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Do you see the answer? Let's continue and reveal the answer together. Simple advice to you, always look for patterns. All figures here are considered asymmetrical. Look for figure A. The part on the left of the line and then the part on the right of the line are different. Same thing is true for figures C and D. So figures A, C, and D are asymmetrical. So the correct choice here is choice B, which is heart, because heart is symmetrical. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the question from the real test you can try to solve on your own. I have full confidence that you can solve this challenge from the real test. Determine the next number in this sequence. And you have a series of numbers presented on the screen. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and then the missing number that you need to figure out. You have four choices to pick from. Choice A, 32. Choice B, 34. Choice C, 36. And choice D, 38. Feel free to pause this video and try to solve this challenge now. And if you have figured out the answer, feel free to post the answer in the comment section of this video. Please also include your rationale so I can give you my feedback. I am also planning to post a detailed answer in my future videos, so make sure to subscribe and review my latest videos on the topic to learn about the answer and how to come up with the answers to similar questions in a test. Thanks for participating and good luck! Let's look at the interesting question which was designed to mislead you. Which of the following is different from the others? And you're presented with four different shapes. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Please take closer look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. As usual, always look for patterns and commonalities in between shapes. In this case, choices A, B, and C, they all have the right angle, and right angle here is highlighted. What's interesting here is choice C was designed to mislead you because choice C has a cut corner. But the correct answer for this question is choice D. Let's recap. Always look for patterns. All shapes here have the right angle except for one, and pentagon 
does not have the right angle. That's why you should select choice D, which is the Pentagon. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Let's look at the interesting question, which tests your pattern recognition and analytical skills. Which of the following squares is different from the others? And you're presented with four squares, each square containing nine small squares inside of the different colors. You have four different choices to choose from, A, B, C, and D. All look kind of similar, but one of them is substantially different. Do you see the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you find the solution? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution and explanation together. My recommendation to you is always look for patterns. All squares here depict a T pattern, except for one. You see that the square A has yellow T pattern, square C has purple T pattern, and square D has dark blue T pattern. If we look back, square B does not have any T patterns. So this square is substantially different from the others. Let's recap. Always look for patterns. All squares in this question depict the T pattern, except for one. Figure B does not have a T pattern. And this is the correct answer for this question. Hopefully you've nailed it and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Let's look at the interesting question you frequently see on the test. You're presented with the passage and then the question that follows the passage. So I'm going to read the passage and then we'll let you answer the question and we'll reveal the solution in a little bit. It is widely believed among scientists that at some point Mars had enough water to cover the entire planet in an ocean that would have been 330 to 4920 feet deep a volume approximately equivalent to half of Earth's Atlantic Ocean. Although some of this water clearly escaped through the atmosphere, recent findings discovered that this does not account for the most water loss. A research team incorporated data from various extraterrestrial missions by analyzing the plethora of cross-mission data. The team focused especially on studying the quantity of water in its different states gases, liquid, and solid on Mars over time. Additionally, the team researched the chemical composition of the planet's current atmosphere and crust, closely expecting the ratio of deuterium to hydrogen. So here's the question based on the passage. Mars once contained the same amount of water as Earth's Atlantic Ocean, and you need to determine choice A if this is true, choice B if this is false, or choice C if you cannot say. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the answer. Possibly pause this video to see if you can get to the solution. And we will continue to get to the correct solution together. Typically in questions like this you're presented with the passage that is very hard to understand. It also contains a lot of scientific or professional words that are not used in the common English language. So your goal here is to scan through the passage to see if you can quickly come up with the answer because you have limited time on the test. So the question here asks whether Mars once contained the same amount of water as Earth's Atlantic Ocean. So you need to scan for the passage for the keywords like Atlantic Ocean or Earth. And you can find this statement right here on the line 4. Based on your scanning, you will see that the article states that Mars had enough water to cover the entire planet in an ocean, a volume approximately equivalent to a half of Earth's Atlantic Ocean. Mars only had half of the amount of water in the Atlantic Ocean. So the correct answer here is choice B, false. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to quickly answer similar questions in the test. Here is the question for you to try to solve on your own. I have confidence that you can answer this question correctly. Please read the passage on the left. You can pause this video to read the passage. And here's the question. In the context of the passage, the underlined word plethora most nearly means choice A, an important aspect, choice B, a lack of, choice C, a computer hard drive, and choice D, a great amount. Do you think you know the answer? 
If you know the answer, please post it in the comment section of this video. And I'll share with you my feedback shortly. Thanks for participating and good luck! Let's look at the interesting question, which tests your pattern recognition skills. The following items have similarities with each other. Which item does not belong to the group? You're presented with four different choices. Each choice has two shapes inside. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the items that might be different from the others? Spend some time, possibly 10 to 15 seconds, to think about it. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve and get to the correct solution together. As usual, my advice to you, always look for patterns. And the pattern here is number of corners. Each particular shape has certain number of corners. For example, let's look at the star. Star has five corners. One, two, three, four, five. And this shape only has four corners. So the similarity here between choices A, B, and C is the fact that each shape inside the rounded square has different number of corners. Star has five, this shape has four. This shape has five, this shape has six. This shape has eight, and this one has seven. But the correct answer here is choice D, because in this case, these two shapes have the same number of corners. So let's recap. Always look for patterns. In this case, the figures have similarities with each other. Each figure contains shapes that have corners that can be counted consecutively. And figure D have shapes that have the same number of corners. So the correct answer here is choice D, because the choice D's shape have the same number of corners. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Or maybe you've even came to the correct answer on your own. Keep in mind, and that's what's interesting, the arrow here is not really a shape. One of the solutions that you might have gotten is that this is different because arrow is very different from the shapes and may not be considered a shape at all. So, a lot of leads to the right questions. Hopefully you've nailed this one and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Let's look at the simple but at the same time interesting and tricky question which tests your knowledge of pattern recognitions. Determine which shape is different from the others. You're presented with four different shapes. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a closer look to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Do you see the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to give yourself at least 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Do you recognize the pattern? Let's continue to see if we can get to the correct solution together. Let me explain to you how to come up with the solution in this particular case. Always look for patterns. And the pattern specific to this particular question is number of corners in the shapes. If you look closely, three choices have even numbers of corners except for one. Choices B, C, and D have six, 10, and eight corners respectively. And choice A, only has five corners. Hopefully you selected choice A when you looked at the question originally. But in case you need more practice problems, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Let me share with you a tricky question from the test which validates your knowledge of pattern recognitions and logical reasoning. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? And you're presented with four squares. The fourth square has a question mark, which means that you need to figure it out. And you have four different choices. Choice A, B, C, and D. An answer is not obvious, but I'm pretty sure you will figure it out. Please give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can see the answer, or maybe you can come up to the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. And here's the answer. The fourth box in the sequence is now populated. But let's go through the logic and rationale so you would know how to answer similar questions in the test. Number one tip, and always a tip, is always look for patterns. So what you see is that the figure inside rotates clockwise. If you look at the corner of the shape, you will see that the corner was on the particular side of the square. It was on the left side, 
Now the same corner touches the top line of the square. And then in the third box, it touches the right line of the square. Which means that you can logically assume that in the following, in the fourth box, it will be touching the bottom line. There is also a pattern of arrows. You see that the box number two has the arrow pointing to the right. And boxes one and three do not have this arrow. So the arrow only present in the second box. In the original question, arrow is only present in the second box. We can logically assume that it only placed in the boxes that are even. Number four box is missing, so you can logically assume that the arrow should be present in the box number four. Among the choices presented, only choice C and D are valid because only they contain the arrow. And you need to determine the final box based on the position of the shape inside the square. So the correct answer here is choice C. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar questions in the test. Let me share with you tricky question which tests your analytical and pattern recognition skills. Here is the question. Which of the following completes the sequence? You're presented with the sequence of four ovals and the third one is missing. And you have four different choices to choose from. Choice A, B, C, and D. All choices with the similar ovals, just with the different dots located in the different places of the oval. Do you think you see the answer? Take a look carefully and maybe spend 10 to 15 seconds looking at this particular question, possibly stopping the video. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. When solving any type of questions, always look for patterns. And if you look carefully, you will see multiple patterns happening here. The first pattern is there's always a small circle inside the larger oval. And then the second pattern for this particular question is that the math is used to determine the next item. And since math is used, we can use calculations to determine the missing part. You see that the item number two has four small circles and the item number four has 10 small circles. So we can use subtraction to calculate the item in the middle. And if we subtract 10 minus four, we will get to six. So the correct answer here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. But in case you need more practice problems, please check out my ebook in the description section of this video. And now here's the question for you to try. If you figured out the answer, please post it in the comments of this video so I can give you my feedback. Bill's phone provider charges him $18 for the first 500 texts each month, plus five cents for every text sent after that. If Bill sent 689 text messages last month, how much would his provider charge him? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $25.50. Choice B, $26.25. Choice C, $27.45 and choose D, $28.95. You can pause this video and try to solve this challenge now. And if you have figured out the answer, feel free to post the answer in the comment section of this video along with your rationale so I can give you my feedback. I am also planning to post a detailed answer in my future videos, so make sure to subscribe and review my latest videos on the topic to learn about the answer and how to come up with the answers to similar questions on the test. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's the question which tests your reading and reasoning skills. You're presented with the passage and then the follow-up questions which tests your understanding of the material. Here's the passage. In light of recent and expected increases in America's non-reserve liabilities as well as extremely high stock market volatility, the FOMC will purchase treasury bills at least into the second quarter of next year in order to continually maintain ample reserve balances at or above the adequate level that prevailed before the COVID-19 pandemic. Furthermore, the FOMC board made the executive decision to conduct term and overnight repurchase agreement operations at least through November of this upcoming year in order to ensure that the supply of reserves remains stable even during periods of drastic spikes in non-reserve liabilities and to mitigate the risk of money market pressures that would negatively affect policy implementation. And now here is the question. 
money market pressure would ultimately worsen policy implementation more than it would benefit it. And you have three different choices. Choice A, true. Choice B, false. Or choice C, cannot say. Do you think you see the answer? Give yourself a couple seconds to scan through the passage and see if you can come up with the correct solution. Now let's go ahead and reveal the correct answer together. So here's the thing with these types of questions. You typically present it with the passage that has a lot of professional words that are hard to understand and very long sentences. It was even hard for me to read all of these sentences. And because your brain power goes into the reading, comprehensions of what you read goes into the back burner. This is how these questions are typically designed. Plus, on top of this, you have limited time to answer them. So let's look at explanation and let's look at how to quickly answer these types of questions in a test. So here's the explanation. The question asks whether or not money market pressure would ultimately worsen the policy implementation more than it would benefit it. So you need to scan the passage for key phrases like money market pressure or policy implementation. And they are located at the bottom of the passage, highlighted with light green color. You would need to see that the article states that conducting term and overnight purchase agreements would mitigate the risk of money market pressures that would negatively affect policy implementation. So the key here is negatively affect policy implementation. The article states that the money market pressures would negatively affect or worsen policy implementation. So the correct answer here is choice A, true. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know that maybe in case of passages like this, instead of reading and spending time on reading it, you just need to scan for the keywords. And this is how you succeed on the test without losing a lot of times on these types of questions. Let me share with you a tricky question from the real test. Somehow though, I have a confidence that you will figure out the answer, especially if you will closely look for patterns. Here's the question. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? You're presented with the sequence of four squares and fifth one is missing. And obviously there are four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. And all of these choices look very similar. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video and give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the pattern? Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. As usual, my advice to you, always look for patterns. And if you look closely, you see that there are at least three different patterns presented here. There's a pattern for corner sequence. This is the boxes, for example, here in the upper right corner. And they move clockwise. You see the pattern continues in the box three. And the upper right corner becomes bottom right corner. There is also a diagonal sequence, and I show the sequence right here in the boxes two and four. And diagonal sequence also moves clockwise. It moves from the top right corner to the bottom left corner. And in the box four, it goes from the upper left corner into the bottom right corner. So once you know both sequences, you can calculate the missing item number five. And the logic here is that the next box will contain the same pattern as the first and the third rotated clockwise to the next position. Let's recap. There are two sequences in the figure presented. We have corner sequence, we have diagonal sequence, and order sequence. Corner sequence goes in boxes one and three, and diagonal sequence goes in boxes two and four. Both sequences move in clockwise in the next item. And the sequence's order is one, two, one, two, and then the missing item. This is why the next box will contain the same pattern as the first and the third, rotated clockwise to the next position. So the correct choice here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Here is the question for you to try to solve on your own. I have confidence that you can answer this question correctly. Please read the passage on the left. You can pause this video to read the passage. And here is the question. In the context of the passage, the underlined word plethora most nearly means choice A, an important aspect, choice B, a lack of, choice C, a computer hard drive, and choice D, a great amount. Do you think you know the answer? If you know the answer, please post it in the comment section of this video. And I'll share with you my feedback shortly. 
Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's an interesting question. Which tests your knowledge of pattern recognition, logical reasoning, as well as analytical skills? Which of the following comes next in the sequence? You're presented with the sequence of five shapes, five squares, which have triangles inside. One square is missing triangles, and you would need to make a selection which square is missing out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. An answer here, believe me, is not obvious. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can recognize the pattern and come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Typically, there are patterns on the test questions. What you need to do to find out the right answer is to recognize the patterns. There are multiple patterns in this question. Pattern number one is that the first two shapes have triangles pointing outward in the different directions. And you also see this is the mirror line. And then from the mirror line, you see that the colors go in a different pattern, green and blue to the left. So the same thing should happen from the mirror line to the right, green and blue. Therefore, this is why the missing shape will contain green triangles that point in both directions. So the correct choice here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar questions in the test. Here's the tricky question to test your pattern recognition skills. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? And you present it with the sequence of five squares. Each square has smaller shapes inside. The fourth square is unknown and you need to detect it from the four possible choices. Choice A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? It's not obvious. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can recognize the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As usual, always look for patterns. A lot of times there are multiple patterns present in the question, but in this particular case, there is only one pattern. And the pattern is, is that the shapes rotate clockwise with the increment on every move. For example, if we look at the shapes going from box number one to box number two, and we follow the yellow shape, we see that it moved from the position at eight o'clock to the position at two o'clock. And this happens because the move went from box one to box two. So the next increment, if we follow the same yellow box, would be with the increment of three. If we do the math, one, two, and three, and that would determine the next position of the yellow box. And this is yellow box in the square number three. If we follow this pattern logically, you will see that the next move in the shape number four would be one, two, three, four, basically coming back to the same position. Tricky question, but answer is easy as long as you know the pattern. Hopefully you figured out the answer and now know what to look for in similar questions in the test. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our daily question challenge in the community section of this channel. I also recommend that you check downloads in the description section of this video. Please also check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. I would encourage you to share this video with other people that might be looking for the job. This will help them to get prepared and pass assessment test faster. Please consider subscribing and following this channel. We have community of great people helping each other to get ready and pass the test. Please leave questions, comments, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your interview and assessment test. Thanks for watching.